Hi grade nines, um, so we are moving on to a subtopic of dots, so you can write the heading that just says dots, but more complicated examples. So I was hoping the previous lesson would be an introduction to dots and you could practice the homework, hopefully you've marked it and you've dealt with any questions you had, and so hopefully you're feeling that you know dots are, are you're fairly confident with them so now i'm just going to take it up a notch they're not um they don't get any more difficult there's nothing new to teach you but just to show you some examples where they are a little bit more interesting so let's have a look at some examples and we'll write some notes as we go so example one says factorize and a says x to the power of four minus one so first thing i always do when i factorize anything ever which most people forget to do is check for highest common factor now there's two terms here it's h to the power of four and one and they don't have anything in common. So now I look for the dots. Well, is there a difference? Yes. Are there two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Yes, they are. So now I factorize, and we've done this countless times now. So what multiplies by itself to give you a to the power of 4? That's a squared times a squared. What multiplies by itself to give you 1? That's 1 and 1. And 1's always a plus sign, and 1's always a minus sign. Now here is why. I put my plus sign first and my minus sign second, even though it doesn't matter. We always need to check, now that we've done a dots, is there another dots? Is there another dots? So it's almost like when we did the highest common bracket and we took out a highest common bracket and then we were like, oh, that's great. And in the beginning, it was finished. And then when we got to more complex examples, we said to ourselves, now that I've taken out a highest common bracket, are there left over highest common factors in the left behind bracket? I'm hoping that that's, that that's ringing a bell and you can remember that. This is almost the same thing. Now that you've done the first difference of squares, is there another difference of squares? Now let's look at the first bracket. That cannot be a different squares because there's a plus sign. Now that's why I always put the plus first. Because then I know that the first bracket is finished. I can't possibly do anything with it. So this cannot be a dots. Oh, sorry, let me erase that. This cannot be a dots because of that plus sign. So that is why I put it first. So I'm just going to say this is why I put the plus sign first. Simply so that I know that that bracket is finished. It cannot be a dots and it just has to stay the way it is. Can the second bracket here be a dots? Well, let's check. Is there a difference? Yes. Is there two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Oh my word, yes they are. So you've got to always check. Once you've checked the first dots, you've got to check is there another dots. Now, if this first bracket cannot be a dots, it has to stay there. It can't you know, disappear. It just gets brought down. However, my second bracket is going to become expanded, I'm going to factorize this into another, a further two brackets because this is another dots. Now I do it in exactly the same way. I say to myself, I've got a squared. What multiplies by itself to get a squared? a times a. And again, you've got one. So I say to myself, what multiplies by itself to get one? One and one. And one's a plus sign and one's a minus sign. Now again, I write the plus first and the minus second because who knows maybe you have more dots still to go well let's check this cannot be a dots because it's a plus sign which is why it was already just brought down this cannot be a dots because it's a plus sign so tick could this be a dots well it could there's a difference it's two terms but they're not both perfect squares one is a perfect square but a is not so this falls down because they're not both perfect squares. But there's nothing wrong with designing a question that has a dots and then a dots and then a dots. It does get a bit ridiculous and so I probably would only put this type of question in a test because if you miss the first, you know, if you miss the second dots then you'll definitely miss the third dots. So we generally like to put just where there's two dots within a question. So what have we learned from this one? Always check for highest common factor, then check for the dots and then don't forget there could be another dots. Okay, let's look at question B. Why is question B under the more complex questions? Well, let's go do what we normally do. 
check for highest common factor or there's two terms and they have nothing in common so now I check for a dots and I say to myself is there a difference and I'm tempted to say no because look it's a plus sign okay but do you notice that there's a minus sign there so just be careful your difference doesn't have to be obvious can you swap the order of the terms to make it a difference can you swap the order of the terms to make a difference now this actually is a difference it's just written in a weird way what do we generally put first when we write an expression we generally put the positive term first which is x squared then the minus 9 now notice you're not just allowed to swap things around whenever you feel like that's what we learned in the switcheroo that you can't just swap things because you felt like it on that day but here I'm not swapping things I'm moving around the order so I'm swapping the order I'm not swapping signs so I'm not saying that this is you know x squared plus 9 and suddenly I'm making x squared minus 9 that's not what I'm saying this was minus 9 first and then plus x squared so all I'm doing here is I'm writing the the second term first and the first term second so don't forget that you can I'm going to erase this because that's not what we're doing don't ever forget that you can swap around any order for any terms as long as you move it with its sign which is what I'm doing here so now is it a dot? yes it is and it's a bracket times a bracket I say to myself what multiplies by itself to give you x squared x times x what multiplies by itself to give you 9 3 and 3 and then one's a plus and one's a minus and then I have to say to myself that's great I've done a dot but I've now learned is there another dot is my next question well this term cannot be a dot because it's got a plus sign this term could be a dot because there's a minus sign and there's two terms but careful neither of those terms are perfect squares and so it's also not a dot okay great so that was a good one let's go on question C question C says 200xy minus 2x squared cubed y so my first question is there a highest common factor well there's two terms and I definitely see something in common because 2 goes into itself and into 200 here is 1x and here's xxx so 1x can go outside and then the first term would have run out and here is 1y and here is 1y so 1y can be taken out so now I say to myself what do I need to multiply 2xy by to get 200xy back well definitely 100 and I don't need any more x's and y's so that's it then I say to myself what must I multiply 2xy by to get minus okay 2x cubed so I need x squared and I think that's it so the minus and then 2 times 1 if oh sorry 2 times 1 would give me the 2 and then I'm clearly missing um, an x squared now that I've checked my highest common factor and I've done that that was a fairly complicated highest common factor and now I need to check for a dots is this a dots well there's two terms and there's a difference and they're both perfect squares so I keep my highest common factor and this bracket is going to factorize to a dots so I say to myself what multiplies by itself to give you a hundred ten times ten what multiplies by itself to give you x squared x times x and then my signs are one's a plus one's a minus now I need to remember I need to go and check is one of these brackets another dots now first one can never be a dots because it's a plus sign and my second one here is also not a dots because while it's a difference and while it's two terms neither of those are perfect squares okay on to D question D says 25 a squared minus 100 so we should start getting used to this now first check for our highest common factor which there is because 25 goes into both of those so then it's a squared minus 4 I think because 25 times a squared will give me 25 a squared and 25 times minus 4 will give me minus 100 then I say to myself is there a dot and there is a dot because that is two terms and they're both perfect squares and it's a difference 
So that's going to factorize to a binomial times a binomial. And I say to myself, what times itself gives me a squared? a times a. What times itself gives me 4 is 2 times 2. And my signs are 1's a plus, 1's a minus. Now, what I've learned from these examples is I must go check, do I have another dot? This is a plus sign, so no. This is a minus sign, but neither of those are perfect squares. And so I'm finished. Right, just a couple more examples to go. Next one. First thing I check for is a highest common factor. Is there a highest common factor between these two terms? Well, is there something that goes into 9 and into 16? Well, 3 goes into 9 but doesn't go into 16. 9 goes into 9 and doesn't go into 16. So no. But I do see an x there and an x there. So I'm going to take out x, which leaves me with 9y squared minus 16. So then I say to myself, do I have a dot? And if I look in my bracket, I think I do have a dot. Because that's two terms, there's a difference, and they're both perfect squares. So they're going to factorize to a binomial times a binomial. So what times itself gives me 9y squared? That'll be 3y times 3y. What multiplied by itself gives me 16? That'll be 4 times 4. And 1's a plus and one's a minus. And then we say, do we have another dot? So this first term cannot be a dot because it's a plus sign. The second term is a minus, which is looking good, but neither of those terms are perfect squares. And so I'm finished. Right, so hopefully these are becoming more and more easy for you. So we've got two more to do. Um, second last one. Do I have a highest common factor? Well, there's two terms. I think there's a highest common factor of 4 and b, because 4 goes into itself in 16, and I've got a 1b there, but 5 there. So now what's left behind in my brackets? For 4b times b to the power of 4, because I actually need b to the power of 5, and this is minus, and 4 times 4 will give me 16, and I've already got a b. Then I say to myself, do I have a dot, a difference of two squares? Well, I do have two terms, two terms. They're both perfect squares, and it is a difference. So yes, I do. So I keep my 4b. It's my highest common factor. I have a binomial times a binomial, and I say to myself, what times itself gives you b to the power of 4? It would have to be b squared and b squared. What times itself gives you 4 is 2 and 2. 1's a plus and one's a minus. Now I've always got to check, do I have another dot? This can't be a dot, that's why I always put it first. This looks very promising because there's a minus, there's a b squared, but two is not a perfect square. And so now I'm finished. Okay, so our last more complicated one is probably the most difficult one, and that is g. g is looks interesting, so let's start. Is there a highest common factor? Well, let's have a look. There are two terms. Now, unfortunately, this is what makes this one complicated, is this first term is quite weird. It's an entire bracket squared. So there's uh, an entire bracket, and unless I can see an identical other bracket, there aren't going to be any highest common factors. So then I say to myself, is there a dot? Okay, well... Do I have a difference? Yes. Do I have two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Well, 16 is a perfect square because it's 4 times 4. And this is a perfect square because it is something squared. So if I ask you, if the question was x squared minus 16, you would say it's a perfect square. So this is exactly the same question. It's just instead of x, I've got a minus 1. So it's almost exactly the same question as x squared minus 16. Now, how would you factorize x squared minus 16? You would say, what multiplies by itself to give you x squared? It'd be x times x. What multiplies by itself to give you 16? 4 times 4, 1's a plus, 1's a minus. Now, if you can factorize x squared minus 16, we can factorize this. Because as it dots, it comes from a binomial times a binomial. The 4 is easy. 
4 times 4 gives me 16. The sign, signs are also easy because 1 must be plus 1 must be a minus. So now let's look at this um, whole a minus 1 all squared. If this is a minus 1 squared, it's the same as having an x squared. And we said what times itself gives you x squared? It's x times x. So what times itself will give you a minus 1 squared? Well, that'll have to be a minus 1 times itself. So notice this is exactly like having an x times an x gives you x squared. It's just that instead of having an x, you've got a minus 1. So it's a little bit weird. Um, it's definitely the most complicated of the dots. Okay, now my question is, is that the simplest way to write this? Well, are these brackets doing anything? Well, not really. So I could just write this as a minus 1 plus 4, and this is a minus 1 minus 4, which means I actually can write this a little bit simpler. This is a plus 3, and this is a minus 5. So definitely a little bit complicated. Send me a message if you struggle with that one or if in the classwork that I'm not going to give you, if you find one that you struggle with, that's definitely the most difficult one. Really important to also maybe comment of when you saw this, would you be tempted to multiply it out? Would you be tempted to say a minus 1 times a minus 1 minus 16 and then multiply out collective like terms and then factorize and the answer is you might be tempted to and after the next type of factorizing that would actually work but it's making your life very very difficult so rather before you ever multiply out say to yourself is there a different type of factorizing that I can do now without having to multiply out Great, so that ends the lesson on more complex um, dots. Hopefully that makes sense. It was also a good revision of highest common factor. So there's not too much work to do because there's not a lot of work in the textbook on more complicated ones. So there's three just bits and pieces from three different exercises. Also just notice you've already done the exercise 18.14. That's what I've said here. You've already done this. But when you did it, you d had no idea about the dots yet. So you were taking out highest common brackets but you were never knowing that there could still be a dots left behind. So try redo that again and look at the memo to see if you can see how we're now going to do them. Please don't forget to ask me questions if you have any problems at all. Okay, well done guys.